Their defense is a joke. What it really comes down to is I would love to have either of them. They don't have a, a prayer in their secondary. They have nothing. So you're saying just don't draft Blunt? I'm saying don't draft Blunt. He was unbelievably efficient last year. You know that they use their running backs in the passing game a ton. I'm drafting him tonight. That's Team Huevos. Huevos <laughs> <laughs> Gigantes. <laughs> Hey everyone, welcome into the Fantasy Pros Football Podcast. I'm Bobby Sylvester, joined as always by Mike Taglier. We're going to be talking start or sit on today's show. It's just us. You can follow us on Twitter at BobbyFantasyPro and at Mike Taglier NFL. Tags, how's it going, man? It's good. I I can say that I'm probably doing better than you right now. And I say that because usually we get into the podcast and you're telling me about some pizza you have waiting for you or some sort of junk food. Uh, But, you know, being from an Italian family like I am, we have this home uh, spaghetti sauce that has been basically cooking upstairs for like 30 hours straight. And um, I've gotten to smell that all day and I get to eat it uh, later today. So I'm really (laughs) excited about that. I'm really happy for you, dude. I had ice cream for breakfast. That's that's not even good though. That, I it is. What are you talking? Ice cream's not good. Ice cream is not good for breakfast. No, I can't do ice cream for breakfast. Okay, you're ridiculous. Let's talk <laughs> start sit. There's really no player news to talk about, um, so we're just gonna jump right into it. We'll go running back position, wide receiver, and then we'll circle back around and go quarterback, tight end, DST to close it out. Uh, Tags, you know what? At the end of the show, I'm gonna give you the whole show to think about this. We're gonna make one bold prediction each at the end of the show. All right. All right. I'll think about it. All right. So be thinking about yours. Um, Obviously, we're starting the guys like Chris Carson, Derrick Henry, even Le'Veon Bell against the Giants. I know he hasn't been playing well, but nobody's asking questions about those guys. Let's talk about the players people are asking questions about. Jalen Samuels, it looks like James Conner is going to be out again. If he is out, is Jalen Samuels a must start against the Rams tags? You see, I saw that James Conner was expected to play. So, I mean, we're getting conflicting reports on on James Conner. So, I... They're saying he's going to be limited in practice to start the week, but Tomlin did say, like, I've heard Tomlin say that he uh, expects Connor to be back in the lineup. The question is, you know, what are they going to bring him back to? Uh, it's sure. it, it like against the Rams, it's been very um, volume dependent where it's like I, I was looking through that game earlier today and the Rams, I want to say that they've they've allowed five different running backs to finish top 20 against them or six different running backs to finish top 20 and every single one of those running backs finished with at least 18 or 17 carries against them so like that's where yeah. we need Connor to get volume in this game and that's basically what it comes down to is Jalen Samuels going to be involved I, I know he caught a lot of passes last week but he's not a very good running back he's more of like that you know a, a guy that's that hybrid tight end running back combo so right. I mean Connor I have him at RB17 right now because I don't feel very confident about a lot of running backs this week with six teams on bye. Uh, so he's definitely startable if, you know, if uh, if he goes, which I'm fully expecting him to right now. Well, let's say Connor comes back, though, okay? Connor comes back. Is Jalen Samuels still in play? And if Connor's out, how much of a lock is Samuels? Uh, Samuels is like, I have him at RB33 in terms of with Connor uh, there because okay. I, I just don't, I don't see this game as being... So you'd rather play Kalen Balazs. You'd rather play Ty Johnson. I, no, I actually would rather play Ty Johnson, yes, but but uh, Kalen Balaj, no. I have Balaj at okay. 34. I don't like him this week. Uh, I think it's very possible that the Dolphins just don't give him very many touches, that they go with Miles Ga- uh, Gaskin Agreed. or something like that. Yep. Like Balaj, they've kind of passed over. They wanted him to take that job, and he just didn't earn it. So, um, yeah, if Connor was out again, I would move Jalen Samuels up to probably around RB 25-ish, r- around it? that range. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be too high on him. I, I just don't like the matchup. I don't think that the volume would be there. Mike Tomlin, Dang. he got on Mason Rudolph uh, in the postgame press conference. He said that Rudolph has to do a better job getting Rudolph going. Like, he's basically mad about the fact that he was checking down nonstop. He just kept going underneath, underneath. Like, you have to take some shots down the field. Man. And, um, you know, that's going to hurt. That's going to hurt someone like... It's uh, funny. He's like the uh, anti-Antonio Brown, Le'Veon Bell, Steelers type, right? He's mad that he got 13 receptions. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, mean, he's he's basically just not taking shots down the field, and he has to do that. They want to win football games, so... um, yeah, I wouldn't be so excited. I, I still think he's like a low-end RB2, high-end 3, but I'm not excited about him this week. So I'm looking at it right now on our ECR. You can find it at fantasypros.com slash rankings and see what over 100 analysts across the industry have as their consensus for the rankings. And they've got Jalen Samuels in their top 20 tags. Well, I mean, th- th- I understand why people want to chase the volume, but I, yeah. I-, I don't think it's a it's a sure thing. I haven't really put too much thought Agreed. into James Conner being out, so maybe it would change things, but I-, I don't think so. I don't think I would rather start him over guys like Devin Singletary, like Ronald Jones, like Damian Williams, um, guys that are in much better 
offensive like sh spots and again again the rams you need a lot of touch to do damage against them they haven't been particularly giving on a per touch basis so um yeah yeah he's like that fringe rb2 uh that's basically where i'd have him i would agree with you on singletary over samuels even if connor's out i'd agree on ronald jones against the arizona cardinals uh, damian williams i can't quite go there just because there's the threat of Okay, if he doesn't play as well, they're just going to make LaShawn McCoy, if he's the hot hand, they'll give him all the touches. And it's against Tennessee, not a very good matchup. So I've got Damian Williams, 23. I've got Singletary in my top 20, Ronald Jones in my top 20. And then somebody else that I think is a must start this week, Tags, you might like this. Maybe you disagree, though. And if you do, I want to know why. David Montgomery, he's got a good matchup. He's getting a ton of touches. Uh, I think that he's a very solid play with six teams on by. I have him at RB10. <laughs> Oh, okay. So you agree. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm playing David Montgomery no matter what. Um, he's totaled at least 16 touches in five of the last seven games. He's a clear-cut workhorse right now. And the Lions... In an incredible matchup. It's not like he's facing the Eagles like last week. And even then, he had two touchdowns, 76 yards. Right. The Lions have played eight games. There have been nine different running backs who have scored 14.6 or more PPR points against them, yes. including seven different running backs who have scored 20-plus PPR points. Uh, the Bears are at home. Uh, the defense is getting behind Trubisky. They're trying to say the right things. I guess get it but at the same time this is going to be a run heavy approach the bears are going to pound the ball yeah. and they could do it against detroit i totally agree man i mean i i don't agree on having him all the way up in my top 10 i'd start really, him over levy on bell this week i, I would, would too yeah that's what i was going to say is what's the difference really between rb10 and rb14 where i have him it's not that far and ecr for what it's worth has david montgomery at 15 now tags let's go down and play the game that we do i'm going to give you three players yep. you tell me which one you feel most comfortable starting okay we already talked about devin singletary and ronald jones damian williams i actually had those exact three in the first one that i was going to do um so austin eckler mm -hmm. against oakland Okay, we're going to go Melvin Gordon as well. And let's go Devonta Freeman at New Orleans. Uh, Melvin Gordon would be the one I'd pick for sure. Uh, yeah. You know, this I've got team, him in my top. I've got him in my top 10 against Oakland. Yeah, I, I think he has the best shot of the touchdown of these guys. Like, he's going to get the goal line carries. Austin Eckler is just, he's not really that guy. Uh, I don't think they ever wanted him to get goal line carries. Obviously, you know, he's, yeah. he scored some touchdowns in his time. He's uh, Eckler's still. When he does be, get goal line carries, he fumbles. <laughs> he has fumbled a few times, actually. So um, I, I do think Melvin Gordon is a guy that I'm locking into the RB2 conversation. I'm going back to saying that Melvin Gordon's a must play every week. Is yeah. Oakland a great matchup for running backs? Not necessarily. They've been pretty good against the run. Uh, these two teams do know each other extremely well. But again, uh, Gordon's back into the must start category for me. He's a guy that can score two touchdowns any week. I thought this one was really easy. It's just I've got so many questions about Gordon or Eckler. I mean, it's it's both of them, really, be, this week. If you have to decide between the two, it's, it's very easy. It's Melvin Gordon. Now I've got Austin Eckler in my top 24, no doubt about it, against Oakland. I mean, he's getting a ton of receptions, but uh, to compare him to Melvin Gordon, who is very clearly their number one, and it's not like Eckler's been good lately. It's not like he's going to steal the job back or anything like that. Uh, and then I think Devonta Freeman is a distant number three in this conversation just because he goes up against New Orleans, Tags. Uh, yeah, Devonta Freeman, it's not, I mean, the thing is, it really depends. Like, is Ito Smith coming back? It seems like he probably will, but uh, Devonta Freeman, if there's anybody that's had success against them since, like, 2017, I remember, I think it's back in 2017, where he was the only running back who had a 100-yard game against the Saints, and the Saints have been a really good run defense for quite a bit, a long time yeah. now. Um, so he has had some success, success. It's a divisional game. Obviously, the Falcons bring some problems for that secondary because Marshawn, Marshawn Lattimore is only one guy, and they've had trouble stopping him like Julio Jones and Calvin Ridley. So it's like, I don't know if they're forced to keep extra personnel back. I, yeah. I don't know what it is, but Devonta Freeman usually plays good against the Saints. So I would play him this week as a low-end RB2 and just kind of hope for the best. Um, yeah. We at least know that he's locked into like 15 plus touches. And that's just, that's why I'd play him over some guys that, <clears throat> like an Austin Eckler, I would play Devonta Freeman over Austin Eckler. I'd play him over Latavius Murray, uh, Ty Johnson, because these are guys that don't aren't locked into that 15 touches per game, right. even if it is a tough matchup. Yeah, and he's got upside for more as well. I mean, have you seen his schedule so far this season, Tags? Yep. Minnesota, Philadelphia, Indianapolis, Tennessee, Houston. All these teams are great at stopping the run. Arizona, uh, the, the Rams, and the Seahawks. That's a really tough schedule, but it's not going to get any easier. Yeah, no, it's 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 really not, but it is what it is at this point. Their offensive yeah. line is a little banged up, but that team's going to be involved in shootouts. The good thing is, is that with Muhammad Sanu gone, it kind of frees up some targets, and I don't think all of those go to like Russell Gage or anything like that. So uh, we did see Devonta Freeman heavily utilized in the passing game on uh, the first game without Sanu. So I'm hoping that continues going forward. So I want to ask you guys a question before we move on to running backs, okay? I heard, Tags, I think you probably did as well, but I want to set this up for the listeners, okay? 
I heard who Jerry Rice said is the best wide receiver in the NFL. Yep. So I want you guys at home to think, who do you think is the best wide receiver in the NFL? And now I'm going to tell you. He said Julio Jones, Tags. He agrees with us. Yes, Julio Jones is the best wide receiver in the game. Um, I've Actually, said we agree with Jerry Rice. I yeah, think he, that's a better yeah. way to put it. <laughs> <laughs> right. He listened to us and he agreed with us now. Um, sure. <laughs> no, but Jerry Rice, like the guy knows what it, it looks like to be an NFL wide receiver. Like obviously a great. And even if Antonio Brown was still playing, I think Julio Jones has the route running chops. He has the size. He has the speed. He, there's nothing that he lacks yes. really. And I know that some people would have said touchdowns in the past, but he kind of he kind of dispelled that rumor uh, over the last, you know, 16 games that he's played. But Julio Jones is, he's a freak. Uh, he's Who's number just, two for you? Because we agree on number one. I think we might disagree on number two. Number two, um, it'd be really tough for me to say. I'd probably say Odell Beckham. Wow. Okay. I'm going Michael Thomas, and then I'm going Hopkins, and then I'm going Beckham. Yeah. I mean, they're all fantastic players. I just think Julio is just like the rare combination of everything yeah. in one. Has Cup moved into your top five? Uh, rest of the season? No. I mean, just oh, best actual wide, wide receivers, receivers in football. No. no. Yeah. I, I wouldn't go that far either. I think Amari Cooper's close. Tyreek Hill, uh, Keenan Allen when he's healthy. There's Devontae Adams. There's a lot of them. In yeah, the, in Devontae that. Adams would be up there. Tyreek Hill, you know, he's he's a matchup nightmare. Uh, Cooper yeah. Cup wouldn't be there for me. He, I don't even think Cooper Cup would be in my top 12, to be honest with you. Dang. Okay, he's just a product of Sean McVay. Is that what you're saying? He gets a lot of opportunity. He's a solid player. Like, don't get. I'm not. Yeah. I'm not downplaying Cooper Cup. He's phenomenal at what he does, but he's he's very limited in what he can do. Do I think that Cooper Cup can go and take Julio Jones's role and do that like the number ones do? No. Yeah, I would agree with that. I think that's a good way to put it, Tags. Okay, let's move on back to running backs, and I've got three more, okay? Kenyon Drake at Tampa Bay, so not a good matchup. Now, a lot of people are like, what? Tampa Bay gives up a lot of points. Tags, they're so good against the run. You've pointed this out, and it is absolutely true. Uh, Jamal Williams, the number two for Green Bay, going up against Carolina. And then let's go Matt Breida, who I think is the best running back on the 49ers, but he's the number two there, and he gets Seattle's run defense. So who do you prefer? Kenyon Drake, Jamal Williams, Matt Breida. It would be Matt Breida for sure. Uh, Jamal Williams is close in that territory. I have Breida at 24. I have Jamal Williams at 28, and I have Drake at 35. Um, Drake could move down even further, honestly, Like, because David Johnson today proclaimed that he's playing. He says that he's 100%. Uh, so, I mean... I don't, it's not a good matchup to begin with. And if David Johnson's going to walk in there and get, you know, I'm still expecting this to be somewhat, maybe a 70, 30 time share, 65, 35. I do expect Drake to get some touches. Uh, I think that they're going to kind of play it safe with David Johnson. Mm -hmm. So Drake in, in a week where there's so much going on by weeks, I, I mean, you can consider him if you're like looking between someone like Kenyon Drake and Frank Gore, I'd rather play Drake with the potential upside that he presents on, yeah. a, on a, you know, a, each play basis and they should score some points against Tampa Bay. So um, yeah, I have Drake down 35, but Matt Breed is the one that I would go with uh, against Seattle. I don't think San Francisco is going to try and get into it with, uh, with uh, Russell Wilson. I, I mean, or I don't, I don't see San Francisco wanting to go toe to toe in that matchup. I think they want to run the ball. They want to play good defense, basically limit the points. Good luck running the ball against Seattle. They're going to have to pass and Seattle hasn't been very good against the pass. I disagree. Well, no, Seattle hasn't been very good against the pass, but they, they also considering have, who they've played, but I mean, they haven't been very played. good against the run either. Um, they, in terms of like points per opportunity, they've allowed yeah. it's, it's the points per opportunity is the fourth highest mark in the league. So t like running backs have been extremely efficient against them. Unfortunately, the only thing that there is like concerning about this matchup is that the Seahawks only face an average of 23 running back touches per game. Meanwhile, mm -hmm. the 49ers, there's like something that has to give here. This is insane, Bobby. The 49ers have ran the ball. Okay, with their running backs, you know, because some, sometimes people will talk about the Ravens and they'll talk about Seattle. I'm talking about running backs only because their quarterback doesn't run the ball. 33, they've run at least 33 times in every single game this year. At what? I thought you were going to say that was the average. Or touches. Every game? Uh, touches, I'm sorry. Running back touches. It doesn't matter. That's at, incredible. At least 33 touches per game. And that's why you're seeing wow. these like, crazy high totals. Like Matt Brito, when he's healthy and he's on the field, he's getting between 12 and 17 touches per game. That's fine. Uh, you know, Tevin Coleman has only seen 13 and 14 touches the last two weeks. So it seems like yeah. they want this to be somewhat of a 50-50 timeshare between those two. Uh, Tevin Coleman has a slight edge for me because it's seems like he's the starter and they kind of want him to be the guy but I, I'm with you Bobby I think that Matt Breida is the best running back in this backfield in terms I think he's of, one of the best 10 running backs in all football he's, he's got, really he, dang he's good got at football. so deceptive speed like his his speed is so deceptive because I see people uh, like linebacker safeties taking angles to him and it's like he outruns them to the edge because mm -hmm. they take a bad angle because they, they don't appreciate he's, how he's fast the fastest he running back in the NFL he is what he's, he's faster that. than Kareem Hunt faster than Fournette faster than Derrick Henry yep and it's faster crazy because Lindsay. NFL next gen stats like tracks this stuff and Matt Breida is one of the fastest guys in the NFL, like period. Yeah. 
And Raheem Mostert's really good, too. I mean, they've got three very good running backs and a great scheme. Now, they're missing some offensive linemen, but it apparently doesn't matter because Kyle Shanahan is the man. Now, I'm looking at this, okay, Tags? We've got this tool. Who should I start? It's one of my favorite tools, okay? I've loved this tool since before I even worked for Fantasy Pros. You can go to fantasypros.com slash NFL slash start or just type in who should I start in Google. It's obviously going to be the first one that comes up. So I punched in these three players that I asked about, Jamal Williams, Kenyon Drake, Matt Breida, And that's the order that the experts have them in. 47% of the 59 experts who have filled out their ranking so far say Jamal Williams. And Matt Breed is last year, Tags. What's going on? I think that some people, I'm guessing that it has to do with some people like not knowing that David Johnson is going to play. That, that's the okay. only that's the only way that I can describe it. Because outside but of like, that... Why is Jamal Williams first? Why is he over Matt Breida? That's a good question. Um, <laughs> Jamal Williams, I mean, he's like, so here's my, here's this is this is basically the best way that I could put it for people is that Jamal Williams is essentially Duke Johnson, okay? But he's scored touchdowns over like, I think each of the last four games that he's played. And so people yeah. are like latching onto that and he's scoring points and he's getting, it's in between like seven and, and like 12 touches per game, which is fine for like a flex type player. But for people to start telling me that I have to start ranking him as like right. an RB2, I'm like, you guys are crazy. Um, they do, Aaron Jones is the guy in this backfield, but it's like when those touchdowns stop for Jamal Williams, that's when you're going to see like his actual floor. And mm-hmm. it might not be this week though, because Carolina, they allow a touchdown more often than any other team in the league in terms of what they do per touch. Uh, they've allowed a, a, a rushing touchdown 50, every 15.6 carries this year. So that's, that's obviously not good. Not good. they've allowed 14 <laughs> touches, to, uh, touchdowns to running back. That's not good. That's through eight games. So it's like almost yeah. two touchdowns per game to running back. So you can make the argument that Jamal Williams should be there right next to Brita, but I'm just kind of like taking the more guaranteed touches with Brita. So they're they're like legit so close for me in rankings that you can make the argument for either of them. So Tags, you can sort by the most accurate experts on running backs. And that's what I've done for these three right now. So we've got Dan Harris, number five so far out of 150 analysts. He's got Matt Breida number one. I'm looking at uh, Dylan Chapin from White Wolf Sports. He's number two overall and uh, number 16 for running backs. He's got Breida number one. Pat Fitzmorris, always near the top. He's got Breida number one. You're up there. You've got him number one. Um, that's pretty telling, man, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, my question would be more like, it, would you start Jamal Williams over someone like Ty Johnson? I think the answer no, is probably... I- uh, it's 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 close between those two I, I, because yeah. Ty Johnson's not guaranteed touches. Like that's the part that we're worried about. But the Bears have been a good matchup. So I mean, if you're thinking about starting Ty Johnson this week, and if you're like looking and you're like, should I start Ty Johnson or someone like Joe Mixon? I would rather start Ty Johnson this week. I, I just feel like his matchup is better over the last yes. uh, since the Bears lost to Akeem Hicks. I mean, they've been struggling, man. Four point two one yards per carry, seven rushing touchdowns in their last. Uh, f- I think it's four games. So it's it's not good for them. I've got Johnson in my top 30, and without hesitation, like everyone's going to look at it and say, well, he only had 12 targets last week. I'm sorry, 12 touches last mm-hmm. week. He only had eight the week before. Guys, Trey Carson was was playing. Now he's on injured reserve. Last week, they went up against an extreme pass funnel defense. They had to pass the ball like every play, and that's what they did, and it worked. Yep. And this week, it's the exact opposite. It's mm-hmm. an extreme run funnel defense. They have to run the ball against Chicago if they're going to do anything. I think Ty Johnson gets 15 touches against a... What, mediocre at best run defense, Tags? That's basically where they're at right now. I think the Bears, that's the best way to describe them is they're a mediocre run defense. They're not a team that you need to fear without Akeem Hicks up the middle. So, yeah, Ty Johnson is, to me, is like a low-end RB2, high-end three this week. Would you rather play him than Tariq Cohen? Yes, 100%. Okay, I I would as well, but I'm looking again at ECR, and ECR's got Tariq Cohen a little bit higher. Um, Let's go a little bit further down. If you're really desperate, you need to pick somebody up. We've got guys like Alexander Madison, Daryl Henderson with the question marks. Uh, Naheem Hines, I don't know how much he touches the ball against Miami. J.D. McKissick, he's been getting um, some work. And then LaShawn McCoy, do you like any of these five? I'd go with McCoy, honestly. I, I don't like any of them. Uh, but we're, I hate we're, the matchup. And I, I I mean, he had four touches last week, so the floor is horrible. But yeah. because of the upside, yeah, I, I mean, I guess. And, like, pay attention to Tennessee. Uh, Jarrell Casey, their stud defensive lineman, uh, missed last week. And... Uh, 
Obviously, you know, Christian McCaffrey went bananas, but he goes bananas against everybody. Uh, but <laughs> if Jarrell so Casey is out, the matchup is upgraded. It's kind of like the Bears with Akeem Hicks uh, losing him up the middle. So if he is out again, I would definitely say to upgrade the matchup for Damian Williams and LaShawn McCoy. And McCoy, I mean, they, they have it has been a timeshare all year. So, I mean, we have, we're have we tr- we're almost assuming that Damian Williams is going to take that starting job and he's going to walk back into 15 touches. But there's only been one time this year where there's been more than 14 touches to one running back. So I think LaShawn McCoy is going to be involved, which is why I have him right around Jalen Samuels and Tariq Cohen. It's kind of like the role that I see him in right now. Okay, I'm going to completely disagree with you on if Casey's out, that they're uh, downgraded. I'm not saying Casey's not like a star. He's really good. But they've recently got back Jeffrey Simmons, who is... Simmons uh, is a monster. I I think... What's that? He's going to be a monster. I like that dude. Uh, He's he's already every bit as good as Jarrell Casey. I mean, this guy is incredible. He's going to be one of the best five defensive players in football in a year or two. Yeah, no, I I mean, I agree. I loved him in the draft. It was just a matter of, like, can you draft him and, like, get over the fact that he tore his ACL and it's going to take some time yeah. to get back. It was a short-term sacrifice. This was one of – like, he was one of my favorite picks in the NFL draft this year in terms he of, like, the top value they got with him. Healthy. Yeah, like, I mean – I love the pick, and he is going to be a superstar at some point. Uh, and he, I mean, he might already be, but he's yeah. a little bit small to be a plugger up the middle. Like, he's 300 pounds. Sure, yeah, he's not Jarrell Casey. Right, yeah. I mean, he's he, like I said, he's good, but I, I do think losing Casey, that down that upgrades the matchup, though. All right, Tags, wide receivers. Uh, let's see. I'm going to go down outside the top 20, and I just want to say, um, in ECR, some obvious starts here. Mike Williams against Oakland, great start. Marvin Jones against Chicago. Great start. I don't John have him Brown. as a must start, though. You like, don't have – okay. I have Marvin well, Jones at 33. I don't know why. ECR has him at 16. I dude. saw that. It was like one of those things that popped up. Like whenever you submit rankings uh, on <laughs> Fantasy Pros on like the expert platform, what happens is it, it like gives you a notification. It'll say, you're, are you – it's almost like, are you sure you're you're this dumb? Uh, like, <laughs> did, are you sure did you, you make a mistake? Because this is crazy. Yeah. Kind of, yeah. And it's like I don't understand why people are so high on Marvin Jones. I mean, the Bears all year right. long, there have been five wide receivers who have finished top 30 against them. We've played eight games, guys. I mean, their run top defense – Top 30, wow. Yeah, okay. t- that's it. That's it. Five wide receivers. Those receivers were Emmanuel Sanders, Paul Richardson, odd, Michael Thomas, Terry McLaurin, <laughs> and Stephon Diggs. And by the way, all of those wide receivers finished with at least seven targets. I don't think that we can guarantee that for Marvin Jones, especially in a right. game where I, I don't think they're going to it's, – it's, it's, again, this game is in Chicago. The Bears are favorites. I think the Bears are going to play a very slow-paced game. Like They, they just want to run the ball and grind the clock, keep their defense off the field. Uh, so – if you're going to bet on one Lions receiver, it's Kenny Galladay. So if if the Bears yeah. have allowed five, well, I'm still not betting on him either. Like I mean, I guess you play him, but right. I don't that's feel what I'm saying. About like, anyone against the Bears secondary, that's why that that's the part where I don't understand why Marvin Jones yeah. is so high in ECR. I I mean, I could be wrong in this, and it's very he's like a one play guy where it's like one play can make that difference. But right. the Bears have been. Uh, I, don't I mean, know, it's man. not it's not like he's been great throughout the season. Week eight against the Giants, four for 22. Week six against the Packers, two for 17. Three receptions in week four, four in week one. I mean, he's just so boom or bust, and you have a bad matchup here. I mean, I've got him 24, and frankly, I would have him a lot higher, but I always audit my rankings by looking at ECR and just being like, hold on a second, that does seem a little bit too low. Like, maybe I'm missing something. So I just play it more conservatively during the week, but I think you're right. I mean, he might be outside the top 30, By the way, I got that warning. Hey, are you sure? Are you sure you want to rank Mitch Trubisky in your top 20 fantasy (laughs) quarterbacks last week? And I was like, yes, I am. I'm sure. And that was really stupid. It cost me four points in accuracy. But seriously, Bobby. I mean, I still was top 20 last week, but man, that sucks. So, Bobby, what's the difference between Sammy Watkins? Like, I personally have Sammy Watkins over Marvin Jones. And exactly. That's exactly right. And his ECR is 36, and I've got him in my top 20. I ha- I have him at thirty, but I'm not I'm not too high on Sammy. But he's yet to finish. <laughs> he has not finished outside the top forty six wide receivers in any of the six games that he's played this year. And now yeah. Patrick Mahomes is coming back, and it's like he's obviously a big part of their offense. Like he's why are a we a ton of targets, like ten a game? Right. We're gonna fade Patrick Mahomes' number two option, but we're not going to fade Ma- Matt Stafford's number two option against the Bears. against the Bears. <laughs> You're I, right. I don't get man. it. I don't get it. That's really good. Okay. What about these guys are just outside the top twenty, so most. Most analysts in the industry think they're very solid starts, low-end wide receiver too. I think there's question marks once you start getting this range. So I want to ask you, just in case you feel passionately about any of them, I'm going to give you three again. Tyrell Williams faced the Chargers. Calvin Ridley at the New Orleans Saints. DJ Moore at the Green Bay Packers. 
Yeah, I'm playing. I'm honestly, I'm playing all these guys. I, I have too. them all in my top 22. Um, Ridley was one that I'm higher on than the consensus. Like, I think people like. I think <laughs> I, I want to say that Marvin Jones was like 10 spots higher than Ridley, and, and like, I'm like, why? Um, I, I don't. Have we forgot how good Calvin Ridley is. It's just a matter of volume. Is he going to get it? Well, now that Sanu's gone, yeah, I would think so. Right. I, I don't. I don't get it. I mean, going back to when the team two teams met last year, uh, uh, Ridley tallied eight catches for ninety three yards and a touchdown. Uh, yeah. He did see thirteen targets in that game. But knowing that Mohamed Sanu has gone, like people don't forget this stuff. Like again, why are we attaching ourselves to to two wide receivers against the Bears and not two against the Saints in what could be a shootout? This game has one of the highest over unders on the entire slate, if not the highest. Um, yeah, and we know Lattimore is going to be shadowing Julio Jones. So what's yeah. that leave for Calvin Ridley? Right. Are they? Well, <laughs> that's actually a funny point. So the, the last time, those, I mean, when Ridley had that game against them. The, oh, yeah, that's the, right. They went to Lattimore shadowing because they were like, he's just too good. They did. He was beating like <laughs> Julio was being shadowed by Lattimore and Ridley was beating them like a drum. And they finally were like, we don't know what to do. So we're going to stick Lattimore on Ridley and then we're going to try and bracket Julio. <laughs> and then Julio went off. So it's like, I don't know if they have the secondary yeah. to handle these two. And I like Calvin Ridley as a top 15 play. Um yeah, I'm higher on Is him. Is Matt Ryan going to be back? That's my only concern. Yeah, Matt Ryan's going to be back. He, um, okay. I want to say he practiced today. Um, so, yeah, that he's going to play. If he didn't play, it would be a little bit more concerning. But, uh, yeah, I'm playing Calvin Ridley with little hesitation. By the way, DJ Moore was kind of like a, uh, you know, a, a one-trick uh, a one trick pony, right, last year. He's becoming a complete wide receiver. He's a must-start every week as far as I'm concerned. Uh, we got Robert Woods next, Emmanuel Sanders Golden Tate. So I'm going to give the matchups here. Robert Woods at Pittsburgh. Emmanuel Sanders faced the Seattle Seahawks. Mm -hmm. Golden Tate against the Jets. Which of these three do you like the best? Sanders, easy for me. Um, me too. I have him at 19. I have Woods at 27. And I have uh, who, the Golden Tate. I have actually him. I might be too low on him, but I have yeah, him at 35. You are. If you've got him in the 30s, you're way too low, I think. <laughs> I have him at 35. I mean, I don't like the matchup against the Jets. Brian Poole has been really good. Like, in terms of, like, what the Jets have allowed, the slot is not where it's at. And I know that the, the target floor is high, which is why I probably should move him up a little bit. But... I don't like the matchup. Brian Poole's been one of the better cornerbacks in football this year. Like he left Atlanta and good things started happening for him. <laughs> but uh Bobby, if someone were just looking at like numbers and and, to and taking uh emotion out of it, Devontae Parker would be ranked higher than Robert Woods every single week. Uh, yeah, I th think so, man. <laughs> I think so. There's people at home who were like, I'm never listening to this podcast again. These guys are idiots. Why don't you explain why you think that, Tag? Well, uh, so here's a fun fact. Uh, you could probably win a bet. Um, Robert Woods has fi finished in the top 24. And so he, this is my question. I, I said, if you were oh, to ask any random person, any, any random fantasy player, okay, just say, hey, what do you think Robert Woods is for the remainder of the season? They'd probably say like a low end or a wide receiver too, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, that's about where he's ranked uh, consensus wise. Right. If you were to go through his games, you'd find out that he's finished inside the top 24 wide receivers once this year. Yep. Against Tampa Bay, which is obviously a cake matchup. Yep. I mean, he ranks 20th in targets among wide receivers. He's got 12 carries as well. So it's not like the volume hasn't been there. It's Jared Goff not throwing very many touchdowns. Robert Woods has been unlucky in terms of touchdowns. So he probably mm -hmm. should have more top 24 weeks. But. I mean, this matchup that they have against the Steelers is not a great one. It's it's better for Cooper Cup in the slot. Um, so I'm Woods. I'm low on. I, I know yeah. that. And Emmanuel Sanders. Meanwhile, Parker's been top twenty for the last six weeks combined. Yeah, I mean, he hasn't finished worse than wide receiver, receiver twenty six in like the last five weeks. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Uh, he goes up against Indianapolis this week. So I agree. I've, I've, I'm looking at my rankings. I've got Parker a little bit higher than Woods. I've got Sanders inside my top twenty. I'm with you. Yep. And then Golden Tate, I've got in my top twenty five. I think he's a strong play. Yeah, I'm torn on. I, I mean, I get the targets and following that, but it was a tough matchup against Dallas, and we saw Tate struggle a bit. It was a so. really tough matchup against New England too, and Golden Tate does not care about that. Yeah, I mean, it, it that was probably the best matchup on the field though, in terms of like what it okay. was against them. Yeah. Uh, but I, I get what you're saying, and I mean, I would be torn if I'm choosing between Golden Tate and someone like Marvin Jones. To be honest with you, like I I I might go Marvin Jones because I, I feel like the ceiling yeah. is higher, but it's not great. You know when else Golden Tate had a bad matchup? He went up against Justin Coleman at Detroit, and he put up eight for eighty-five. Yeah, that's what, I think it's Dallas Daniel, wasn't Dallas wasn't a good matchup last week. He no, it wasn't. Uh, but my my concern is like Daniel Jones. He's been very hit or miss in terms yeah. of what he does, and now and knowing now that Stur you know what I'm probably going to move Tate up thinking about this because I did my Do rankings <laughs> the, when I inserted him in my rankings. It was before we found out that Evan Ingram is probably dead. 
Uh, I'm not. I'm kidding. He's not dead. Uh, but he's not. I was like, what are you talking? He's probably about, not going to play. Uh, he actually, he's he's got a midfoot sprain and he's in a walking boot, so he's probably not going to play. So if you yeah. have Sterling Shepard out, Evan Ingram out, it just means tons of targets for for Golden Tate and Saquon Barkley. So uh, yeah, I probably need to move him up a bit. All right, next three. This rounds out my top thirty. So you tell me which order you have them in. Curtis Samuel at Green Bay, DK Metcalf at the San Francisco 49ers, and then Zach Pascal at home against the Miami Dolphins. So I have Pascal and Samuel right next to each other. So I, I okay. like them both. I, I think that uh, both of them are, are fantastic plays. I have them both as top 24 options. Um, and then I have DK Metcalf like way down at 40, 42. Wow. Do you really? Okay. Is it because of Josh Gordon or just because of this defense? A combination of the two. Uh, so DK Metcalf, I mean, every like anybody that's listened to this podcast for a long time knows that I'm a fan of DK. Uh, yeah. But targets are not easy to come by in Seattle. And he has now seen five or fewer targets in, I think it's four of the last six games. Yeah. And in the games that he did receive like those the big target shares were games that Russell Wilson threw the ball more than 40 times uh, against the 49ers teams are averaging just 29 pass attempts per game or 28 uh, Why? and they're and playing the reason from behind. Is be- that doesn't make any sense the reason is because they're averaging so few a plays per game like there's only 53 yeah. plays per game uh, they have San Francisco has been somewhat exposed against the run uh, over the past few weeks so I do anticipate the Seahawks going in there to like pound the ball on especially the road especially with Quan Alexander out yeah yeah and DK has that one play potential like he's one of those guys where it's like you know one play can kind of make put him into like the top 25 wide receivers for the week uh but do i want to bet on that against san francisco a team that's been like a nightmare for pass catchers i don't uh especially being the number two at best on his team behind tyler lockett so you have pascal as a solid wide receiver three just want to clarify yeah i have him actually as a like a low end wide receiver two high end three. Oh, okay oh yeah that's pretty good mm-hmm. um i'm gonna use the number one for brian hoyer going up against miami yep. lesser quarterbacks have torn up miami this year so uh, I mean, Sam Darnold couldn't get it done, but everyone else has. <laughs> <laughs> Sam Darnold actually... I'm sorry, guys. I had to throw that in Sam there. Darnold there were actually, so many people who were mean to me. So mean <laughs> when I said that I didn't think Sam Darnold was very good. So, you know what? I'm taking a victory lap you know what? Sam time. Darnold could have ended that game. with inst- <laughs> He would have ended up 28 of 39 for like 270 yards and two touchdowns if that one... One catch that that ba- that went to Ryan Griffin didn't get overturned, and it shouldn't have been overturned. Uh, yeah. So that game would have looked a lot different uh, for Darnold had that happened, and people would have been like, "Oh, it wasn't a bad start for him." I don't. It is what it is. Like that. So you're saying Sam Darnold might be a top 25 quarterback then? Might <laughs> with 26 <laughs> with 26 quarterbacks, he might be top 25. <laughs> All right, man. Next three, let's go. Marquise Brown against Cincinnati. Robbie Anderson slash Jamison Crowder. Let's throw them both in there with Larry Fitzgerald at Tampa Bay. Robbie Anderson. I'm going to do it again to myself. I don't know Oh, why. are you really? Man, I can't. I cannot. Uh, dude, it, it's it, was so- like it, it does not get any better than last week. It does not get any better. And he went two for 30. What's funny is it actually, <laughs> literally, these are my words in the primer, Bobby. I'm going to read it. Actually, it might get better against the Giants. <laughs> I said, if you can believe it, the Giants have been even worse than the Dolphins against wide receivers. They are allowing a ridiculous 10.17 yards per target to wide receivers. Now, just how bad is that? Some people listening might not know how bad that is. Here are the top five receivers in fantasy football with their yards per target. Michael Thomas, 9.8. Mike Evans, oh. 10.1. <laughs> Tyler Lockett, 10.7. Chris Godwin, 10.8. Cooper Cup, 9.1. So he turns your league average wide re- they turn your league average wide receiver into Michael Thomas. That's what yes on a per play on a per target basis. That's what I'm saying is that Robbie Anderson. Yeah, but is much- Anderson gets like four targets a game. I know, and it's it's sad, and it, I, I'm gonna I'm probably gonna regret it. Um, so but- he's going three for 44, and a touchdown is gonna bail you out. I I I can't do it, man. I'm gonna I have mean, some Robbie Anderson and some DFS lineups this week. That's oh, all I'm saying. Yuck, man, big yuck. I've not got him cash. outside my top not 36. Cash, I'm not like, do it. I guess you can play him, but I'm playing Corey Davis over Robbie Anderson, and all you haters. No. I, I, no, Bring I have Corey it. Davis at 40. You have him at 40? See, I'm I out. mean, that's about where I've got Robbie Anderson, though, so that's not really <laughs> saying that much. Yeah, I, I, we talk too much about Corey Davis. I like the player. I just hate that. I, I hate I hate it. Yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm sticking to the flu narrative, and I've got Larry Fitzgerald number one out of these, even over Marquise Brown at Cincinnati. I, I actually like Fitzgerald, and he's someone that I would actually debate playing over Golden Tate. Um, yeah. I'm probably not anymore just because like this whole target situation, but I do like Fitzgerald against Tampa Bay. If there's one game that I think we could feel confident playing Fitzgerald, it's got to be this one. Uh, yeah. I, I think I have him outside my top 40 wide receivers rest of season, but I do have him top 35 this week. So you already talked about Devontae Parker, but how high do you have him ranked? Is he a high end wide receiver three for you? Uh, yes, he is uh, wide receiver okay. 25. 
Yep, I've got him 26. Uh, what about Jarvis Landry going up against Buffalo? I would expect Tredavious White's going to be shadowing Beckham. That leaves some openings for Jarvis Landry. We saw Jameson Crowder light them up in week one. This is their weak spot on the defense tags. It has been, but they they were also dealing with some injuries. I'm not I'm not playing Landry I, if I can help okay. it. I would rather play Larry Fitzgerald. Uh, I I'm Ooh, honestly not. This is one of the weeks where I don't think I'm as worried about Odell Beckham. Like last week, I had him like wide receiver 25 or 26. Like I was one of the lowest on him in the industry. I actually had Landry as a better play. Uh, I had him higher Did in, you see in the rankings. That catch that he made. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, it wasn't the catch that was super impressive. It was the run after. Like, what in the world? How is he that good at football? Yeah. He, like, if Baker Mayfield doesn't throw the ball to him, no matter what, every play this game, then <laughs> Baker Mayfield's the worst. Well, this is the, so this is the gift and a curse for number one receivers like Odell Beckham, like Julio Jones, like DeAndre Hopkins. They see number one cornerbacks, okay? They're going to get yeah. shadowed. And Tredavious White hadn't been shadowing too much this year, but they actually, the reason that I they're going to have him follow Beckham is because they had him follow uh, Terry McLaurin last week. It, and it, it was like the first time all year that he'd shadowed in coverage, but they did have a shadow really McLaurin. Well. So Beckham does play in the slot a little bit, and White doesn't go in there. Uh, but when you have a number one cornerback on you, it's kind of like they're going to trust him in man coverage, and they're going to let him cover you, okay? Odell Beckham is better than Tredavious White. He's a better player than Tredavious White. And right. I don't care if Tredavious is one of the best cornerbacks in the game. We have one of the best wide receivers, and if they really do trust him in one-on-one -on -one coverage, I'll take Beckham. Chris Harris Jr. is like, he's top-notch, dude. Like, that dude is like legit. I mean, I'll take, Be I'll take Beckham to get like to catch the ball if the ball's thrown his way, but is he going to get open enough against Tredavious White to get the ball? I mean, I have Baker's it, not throwing it to him unless he's open. I have him at wide receiver 16 this week, so I, I, I've obviously moved him up. I don't think that he's like a smash play, but I, I, yeah. I'm not scared to play Odell Beckham in this game. I was scared to play him last week against Chris Harris. Yeah, I've got him in my top 20 as well. Um, let's go outside of the top 36 here. Obviously, A.J. Green, if he plays, and it looks like he is going to play, well, he's news, start. So, Bobby, right before we started recording, news came out that he did not practice today. And oh, he, give me a break. I know. Isn't it ridiculous? Like, So now they're saying that he uh, basically after he practiced on Tuesday that he he came back and um, was dealing with a little bit of soreness. And so now, now he's considered day-to-day, -day, which means he's Dude, that's called hard. being old. Get out there and play football. Yeah, I'm I'm a little upset about it. It sucks, <laughs> but I mean, it's a bad matchup against Baltimore. <laughs> but yeah. yeah, it's it's not good, man. So Odd and Tate week then? Is that what you're saying? Probably. No, Auden no, good. no. You don't play Odd and Tate anymore. Yeah, I wouldn't play him against Baltimore, but he's good. I, if he's available in your league, I'd go scoop him up. Yeah. Um, okay, Deontay Johnson against the Rams. Let's do one more of these, and then we'll fish for uh, some deeper deeper plays. Uh, Deontay Johnson against the Rams. AJ Brown against the Chiefs. Tyler Boyd against the uh, Baltimore Ravens. I mean, I'd play Boyd. Uh, I just know that the targets are there for him. I mean, if AJ Green played, he'd be the one I'd play. But uh, mm -hmm. Boyd actually benefits from Green in the lineup. But still, like Marlon Humphrey is going to shadow him in the slot. But Ryan Griff or Ryan Finley, he's someone that's going to like he's he's going to have to check down to his wide receivers against that Baltimore pass rush. So I, I I'm going to go with Boyd here. I mean, the ceiling is not too high, and I don't like Boyd very much. But at the same time, I, I'd play him over those guys. I don't really like any of them. I mean, there's a reason I've got them all 39, 40, 41. Like, they're flex plays. Mm -hmm. Don't feel great about them, but they're better than the other guys. Is there anybody deeper than the ECR top 40 tags that you feel confident in or at least are willing to take a flyer on? Ted Ginn. Oh, that's right. I should have known you were going to say him. Yep. I have my wide receiver 33. I, that's another one that popped up and said, are you sure? And I'm like, yep, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Um, wide receiver 33. All right, dude. Yeah. I, I like getting this week and, um, I mean, yeah, I'm getting, I'm, I'm getting there. All right. Uh, Marquez Valdez Scantling's playing enough snaps that I'm willing to play him against Carolina. Uh, but my favorite in this group is Darius Slayton, uh, ECR 47. I've got him well inside my top 40 because of what you said, Brian Poole being on golden Tate. I think that opens up some opportunities. And remember the jets just lost to the Miami dolphins. Like they're a bad football team. Even Daniel Jones is going to put up some points against them. Yeah, Slayton is someone that I'm going to basically go back and reevaluate that game on where the targets are going to go uh, with mm -hmm. Evan Ingram being out because Rhett Ellison is not going to get the target share that he would. So, um, yeah, Slayton, I, I don't know why he's not getting more targets. They actually use Cody he's Latimer so quite good. a bit. Um, yeah. I, I mean, not so good, but he's a lot better than the amount of targets they're giving him. Right. And, and I would like to see him get more targets. Um, so, I mean, he's someone that is probably going to move into like that wide receiver four, wide receiver five conversation for me. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I, by the way, I would not play Mar Marquez Valdez Scantling. I don't think he's, I think he's done. Uh, okay. I, like, so what they did last week is they actually involved, um, they, they had four wide receiver sets and they were putting both Alan Lazard and Geronimo Allison in the slot. So it's very possible that they just kind of move Alan Lazard into the slot and then put Geronimo Allison back on the outside where he succeeded earlier in his career uh, and yeah. then put Valdez Scantling in and, you know, 
in a reserve role because he's not being targeted by Aaron Rodgers at all. Yep, I think that's fair, man. Um, okay, what about Josh Gordon? You playing him against the 49ers? Are we going to wait and see here? I would prefer to wait a week. Me too. Just to, we don't even know if he's going to play. That game's on Monday night, so you're going to have you'd have to have like a replacement. Yep. I think I actually think Debo Samuel. If if you want to play Gordon, if you're like dead set on it, um, I would say grab Debo Samuel as someone that you could plug in in case Gordon doesn't go. I think that's a good way to put it. I mean, I've got him outside my top 45. I'm not playing. I'm mm-hmm. playing uh, Josh Gordon. Like I've said, I've got him in a lot of leagues. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, ideally, you just wait a week on guys that are coming off multi-week injuries, and especially yeah. when it's coming to a new team and playing against the 49ers. All right. Quarterback, we've got five really easy ones. Lamar Jackson every week. Patrick Mahomes every week. Drew Brees against Atlanta, definitely. Aaron Rodgers, I would say pretty much every week at this point, he gets Carolina. Kyler Murray at Tampa Bay, definitely a start. Now, outside of that, we play in Russell Wilson against San Francisco Tags. I mean, you, you kind of have to. I mean, I, I think so too. I, who are yeah. you going to play over him? Like, you're going to grab Tannehill or Derek Carr and start them? No. Would, would you play if Jameis Winston's available in your league? He goes up against Arizona. Yeah, I'd play. Yeah, Jameis he's going yeah, to throw the ball. He's going to throw eight interceptions, but he's also going to throw for 800 yards. Like, would you play him over Wilson? I would. I, I would actually Me too. Play, I would play Kyler Murray, Jameis Winston, Matt Ryan, and Josh Allen, and probably Phillip Rivers too. I, I have Russell wow, Wilson. Wow, man. You're not messing around. I have Russell Wilson at 10. So it's like, as I, I, I mean, honestly, I'm, I'm really concerned about that game in terms of like the, the volume that's going to come out of it. I, yeah. I mean, I love Russell Wilson. He's efficient as I hell. Think, I think Wilson runs the ball in this game. I mean, we've seen him a couple games. Eight carries, nine carries against the, the Browns, seven carries against the Saints. They need to win this game. Russell Wilson's coming out to play. I think I, I, I've got him with ECR at QB6. Yeah, you know what? I'm gonna I'm about to say something just because I want I want to say it on the podcast because I want people to hear this stack. I want you to win bets. Like I want you to make a bar bet. You could bet someone at a bar. Say Aaron Rodgers has finished outside the top 22 quarterbacks more often than he's finished in the top 10 this year. Wow. Now, now, Packers fans, don't come at me. Wow. Don't come at me. Like, I, I've talked in this podcast, and it, I, I love when people tell me that I'm too much of a homer, and I'm like, have people not listened to me say that Aaron Rodgers is the most t- talented quarterback that's ever played the game? Right. No. Like, Tax has taken so much hate for saying Aaron Rodgers is better than Tom Brady. Yeah. In terms of, like, everything equal, they play for the same coach, they play on the same team, Aaron Rodgers is more talented. Uh, Tom Brady Even is, Tom Brady thinks that. He's, he yeah, just said it. He has said that himself. So, I mean, if Brady says that, but... Brady's got ice in his veins, dude. That dude does not care yeah, about anything. And like, I'll take him in the fourth quarter over any quarterback in history, hundred uh, percent. But uh, Rogers, that's just a bar bet. I wanted to tell you guys that one because I thought it was crazy when I was researching this game, the game this week. Because it's like, wow. Hey, Dags, who has the best uh, fourth quarter quarterback rating in NFL history? Is it Jay Cutler? <laughs> no, <laughs> it's probably. I mean, hold on a second. Is it Matthew Stafford? It's Aaron Rodgers, man. And number two, Tony Romo. It's oh, not. It, the, it is not Tom goats. Brady. And in the playoffs, guess who it is? It's Aaron Rodgers, guys. <laughs> I'll take Brady's championships on that one, though. I'm, I'm, not even ta- getting into that. I'm taking his championships, and I'm taking his defenses. I would love to see Aaron Rodgers with Bill Belichick, though. Let's move on to uh, – so you said Russell Wilson at 10. Jameis Winston's a great play. I agree. Yeah. Matt Ryan, great play against the Saints. You already mentioned it's going to be a shootout. Uh, Josh Allen is a good play against Cleveland. I've got him number 9. ECR has him number 11. What about Dak Prescott face the Minnesota Vikings? You kind of have to play them. Uh, the, the, their secondary hasn't looked like I have Dak Prescott at eleven for what it's worth. So him and Russell Wilson are in that same category. They don't have eighteen great plus points in every game except for one this year. What's that? Dak Prescott is eighteen plus points in every game but one this year. Twenty plus in every game but two. Right. And well, the, the, the concern is that there's only been three quarterbacks who have scored more than 16 fantasy points against the Vikings this year. And mm-hmm. all of those quarterbacks threw the ball at least 40 times. That's not a number that Prescott hits on a regular basis. Um, sure. they, they're coming out of short week. I, I, I mean, Ezekiel Elliott should be heavily utilized in that game. But here's the thing. The reason I'm not as scared about Dak, though, is because Minnesota's secondary has looked like beatable. Uh, I think their run defense is actually better um, where it's like, Xavier Rhodes used to like legit shut down number one receivers. He's looking clunky out there. Amari Cooper's like obviously, you know, top five route runner in the game. And um, if you were to watch, like go back, if you have NFL game pass, go back and watch um, Devonte Adams run routes against Xavier Rhodes. Like he legit was yeah. falling down. And Amari Cooper is that <laughs> dude. Like he's the guy that can make you do that too. So um, Rhodes is not scary anymore in coverage. So I, I mean, Gallup is going to be up against uh, Trey Waynes. Waynes has been struggling this year. Like their secondary just hasn't been very good. So I think Prescott's playable. Um, ECR I would, has him at eight. I've yeah. got him at eleven tags. Would you yeah. play Philip Rivers over him against Oakland? I would play. Yeah, Oakland's such a good matchup. It's hard not to. Um, Agree. I'm playing Rivers over Prescott. I'm also playing Jimmy G over Prescott tags. I'm not doing that. 
I love the matchup against Seattle, man. I think they're going to have to pass. Seattle's so much better against the run than they are against the pass this year. See, I'm not going to disagree with you that it's it, it's not a terrible matchup. It's really not. They've allowed seven of nine quarterbacks to finish as the QB 14 or better against them, and that's despite playing like legit bad quarterbacks. Um, they've it, only maybe played... the easiest, second easiest schedule in the league. Yeah, I. But the the, the problem, the reason is that a lot of the points that the quarterbacks have scored have come from volume. Uh, four of the quarterbacks have totaled 44 pass attempts. Like again, Jimmy mm-hmm. Garoppolo. That's not what the 49ers are about. That's not what he, they're going to do. He hasn't yet because they haven't had the game script for that. I think they have the game script for it this week with Quan Alexander. I think the Seahawks lead this game most of the game, and Jimmy G throws the ball 35 times. So from a betting standpoint, Bobby, are you hammering Seattle plus six and a half? What six and a half? That's what I said. I mean, I'm yes, I'm yes, betting pros. I am. I'm betting pros. That's one of my favorite ones. Like, I don't know why Seattle on primetime television. I, I know they're on the road, but it's a divisional game. Russell Wilson getting a touchdown. Hold on, man. I need you to fill the time for a minute. I need to make sure and go into my uh, betting pros account <laughs> and uh, change this really quick before the line changes. Holy cow, six and a half. It makes no sense to. I don't. I don't get it. All right, not only that, dude, I'm putting five units down on uh, on the money line, plus 220 for the Seahawks. Holy cow. Dude, Let's people, go, baby. I'm, dude, people 49ers, are 49ers fans are so mad at us right yeah, now. Do not be mad at us, by the way, because we're talking about the MVP of the league right now, Russell Wilson. <laughs> dude, the 49ers, though, they're undefeated, man. Don't you know? Jimmy, Jimmy G's MVP. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, so I, I, I like Jimmy G this week. Okay, guys. Um, so I haven't said all bad things about the 49ers. Obviously, the 49ers are a great football team. They're really dang good. I think they're a little bit overrated by San Francisco fans who are excited for good reason. I'm glad you guys are having fun with it. I'm having fun with you guys. Hopefully, you guys can understand that. Tags, we haven't talked about Jared Goff. He's ECR 13. Matthew Stafford, ECR 12 against Chicago. And let's throw Kirk Cousins in there too because he's been one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL over the last month. He's at ECR 15. How do you feel about these three? Goff, Stafford, Cousins. Uh, my order is Stafford, Cousins, Goff. I have Goff at 19. I'd rather play Ryan Fitzpatrick, and I'm not kidding. <laughs> I'm done with Jared Goff, dude. Like 100%. Like he's not good. I mean, in terms well, he's of- going to throw the ball 45 times. He might throw the ball 70 times. Ever since they got Minka Fitzpatrick, no quarterback has finished with more than 17.3 fantasy points, and none of them have finished better than QB 16. And don't tell me that Jared Goff is so good that he's going to defy that stuff. He's just not good. Um, you playing Mitch Trubisky over Jared Goff? No, I'm not going that far. <laughs> I have got not Trubisky. Going that far. I've got Trubisky in my top 20 again, man. No, I, I would play Darnold over Goff. I think. What? I'm not kidding either. What is Dar- Darnold? Is he even on my list? Oh, there he is. Okay. Uh, I honestly thought like he wasn't in the top 28, but no, he's at, he's at 19. I have him at 17. I have golf at 19. Okay. All right. Let's go tight end. Uh, again, we've got five obvious starts. Now that Ingram's out. Um, Mark Andrews, by the way, only played 24 snaps last week. Tags. Does that concern you at all? Not really. Uh, it's been a timeshare all year long. Uh, they basically went in there with a certain game plan. They didn't want to duke it out. It's kind of like how I feel about the 49ers this week is that they're not going to want to duke it out with Russell Wilson. Uh, I felt like the the yeah. Ravens didn't want to duke it out with Tom Brady. Um, they wanted to keep the ball on the ground. That They had certain packages You can in run there. the ball against New England a lot better than you can pass it, so it makes sense to put Boyle yeah, out there. Yeah, to have your blockers in there. Mark Andrews doesn't block. He's basically a receiver that just comes in and, you know, when they go three wide or four wide, uh, that's basically how to treat him. Uh, so, yeah, mm-hmm. he's someone I would definitely play. Like, Andrews, I have at six in my in my rankings uh so i think he's an every week play cincinnati's been a bad matchup for tight ends just because you can do everything else against him so tight ends haven't got much love i think they're going to run the ball a ton so i think that means nick boyle is going to be in the game quite a bit no i've still got andrews in my top 10 i just i don't love the play kelsey kittle henry waller oh absolute locks but after that uh, i mean i guess austin hooper even going against new orleans is an absolute lock as well Um, but i've got andrews outside my top five evan ingram is now out for the week who else do you have in your top 10 tags? Uh, so uh, the obvious five. Can we just say Andrews. nobody? Like, <laughs> No, I have O.J. Howard at seven. Um, oh, man. man. <laughs> yeah, I, well, I mean, provided he plays, obviously. Um, His ECR is 16 right now. That serious? was another one where you got the, hey, are you sure you want to do this? No, I didn't get it, but I'm surprised I didn't. Um, but yeah, it's it, Bruce Arians told reporters he expects tight end O.J. Howard to be ready to roll. And I don't think Cameron Brate's going to play. So I have at seven. I have Gerald Everett at eight. Um, Mike so, okay, hold on. Before you keep going, real question. Over or under three and a half targets for OJ Howard? Over. I'd bet on that. Like, is there Dude, a, oh. I'm not a gambler, but if I was that, that would be, I'd be betting over on that. Here's his game log this season. Five, zero, four, three, two, four. Yep. 
I'll take the over. Matchup All is right. phenomenal. Like if they don't target that matchup, they're stupid. I mean, I, I hope everyone knows I'm just asking these questions because right. I know everyone at home is thinking these questions. Yeah, no, Tads, it's a good question. I agree with you. I've got OJ Howard number eight. I wonder what the prop bet is on that. If you could bet the prop on OJ Howard over under targets. I don't know, man. I don't know if you could bet I'm, targets, I'm though, sure because like, targets can be, like, they can be subjective in terms of like, oh, was it a throwaway? Was it a target? Um, yeah. But yeah, I, I have Everett behind him, and then I have Mike Kosicki actually at nine now. He was at 10 <laughs> before Evan Ingram. But, uh, I thought I was the only person in the world with Mike Kosicki in my top 12. No, unfortunately you're not. I mean, I, I'm going to- I've got deal. Jack Doyle there, too. I've got Jack Doyle at number eight. I have Doyle at 10, so I'm, I'm kind of right there. No, uh, I haven't, I'm sorry. I have him at nine. Yeah, there have been nine tight ends who have finished top 18 against the Colts. Um, that zone scheme, they just allow a lot of underneath uh, completions. So, I mean, Vance McDonald could have easily been the the, the target that Jalen Samuels was. And Mike Kosicki, I mean... He's, he's not been, really an underneath receiver, though. Like, he's a, I'm an athlete, throw the ball up to me down the field type of time. I mean, they hadn't used him like that until recently. They're starting yeah. to use him more down the field, which is awesome. Um, because that's basically, I don't know, I don't really understand the usage with him under Adam Gase or even the beginning of this year. I, I, I don't get it. It's like you're not even high highlighting the player's strengths. Uh, so it, there's there's a lot of coaches that do this crap. But uh, Gasicki, again, Ryan Fitzpatrick does sling it. Uh, he's willing to throw to him, obviously. Preston Williams being out, that's obviously going to clear up some of the targets. So I think the floor gets higher, and I'm just kind of playing the percentages here. With uh, I'm not I'm not excited about Mike Gasicki. I want to be honest about, like, about like transparent about everything and tell you guys I'm not excited about it, but are you excited about Greg Olson, who has really struggled outside of Tampa Bay and Arizona Cardinals games? Are you excited about TJ Hawkinson, who hasn't topped 41 yards or something like that since no. his week one performance? Are you excited about Eric Ebron? Kyle Rudolph, none of these guys excited. Eric Ebron's me. playing like 30% of the snaps. He had two targets last week against Pittsburgh. Yeah. Jack Doyle's the starter there. He got 77% of the snaps last week, and he's getting targets too. I've got Jack Doyle in my top 10. I've got Ebron outside my top 15. Hey, by the way, have you ever noticed, Tags, that Mike Isicki looks like Ivan Drago? <laughs> I don't know if I'd say it, but I... <laughs> look, I mean, look up a picture of him, man. It's like a splitting image. Well, I've Are seen you surprised that I know who that is, by the way? I am, considering you never watched Rocky. <laughs> I actually heard somebody else say that, and I was like, who's Ivan Drago? I had to look it up, so I was, oh, uh, I'm was i just messing with you, man. <laughs> um, yeah, Gerald Everett, I've got in my top 12 as well. It is pretty ugly at tight end this week, so pick your poison. My poison is Jack Doyle, Mike Isecki, O.J. Howard. Yeah, that's where I'm at. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of sad I don't get to use Jason Witten this week because, like, he's he's like such a he's been such a good streaming option. And like, I mm -hmm. put this out there, Bobby. He, he's finished top 18, like, which is basically you know like it's not it's not great, but it's not bad. It's like he hasn't he didn't really kill your fantasy team. Top 18 uh, in seven of eight weeks, he's finished as a top. Um, top 12 tight end four different times so it's like he's offering a floor man and like yeah i'm not saying it's a massive ceiling but this matchup this week is just brutal like don't start him against minnesota it's unless he scores a touchdown he's gonna be a bust tags let's go dst here um let's see we got ravens against cincy buffalo against cleveland indianapolis against miami i think those three are really the only locks who else are you confident in uh the browns versus buffalo Okay, I mean, that's not a bad one. ECR has him at eight. I don't feel horrible about it. I like the Saints against Atlanta because uh, Matt Ryan is, uh, before he was hurt, he was leading the league in interceptions. I'm sorry, he was second. We have to forget the the total uh, outlier in Jameis Winston. Behind Winston, Matt Ryan was number one in interceptions. <laughs> Behind Jameis Winston, of course. <laughs> uh, the 49ers, I think, are a must-start every week, even though they're going up against Russell yeah. Wilson. Oh, yeah. Um, the Giants against the Jets. That's a great matchup. Uh, who else do you have in your top 10? Yeah, the, you said it. The, 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 the Browns, the 49ers, the Saints are in there. The Chiefs are in there against Tennessee. Yeah. Uh, it's very possible that Mahomes puts up points on the board and that Tennessee has to throw, and that just allows for a lot of mistakes to be made. Um, the Bears. The Chiefs versus, have a pretty good secondary, actually, too. Yeah. The Bears versus Detroit. Um, I have I have high expectations for the Bears defense this week is basically what I basically the theme of this show. Uh, I know this team very well and I'm able to tell you when you do and don't play players like I'm pretty level headed when it comes to the Bears. And I do think that defense is going to show up to play this week. Um, the, the Detroit coming back from a game uh, on the West Coast last week. Um, the Rams are a, guy, are a team that I would play this week, like without hesitation, with Jalen yeah. Ramsey there. Uh, they're basically going to attach him to uh, Juju Smith Schuster. That pass rush is going to get to Mason Rudolph. He's going to get hurt. Like That dude's going to be hurting after this game. So I, I think the Rams are a good play. I got the Rams and the Bears also in my top eight. I agree with you, Tags. Uh, outside of my top ten, 
I don't really feel confident about anybody, so hopefully you can get one of those we mentioned above. Uh, obviously, you can pick on Mitch Trubisky. Sorry, Tags, not trying yeah, to be rude. It happens. Uh, but the Detroit Darius Lions Slay's get back, too. Week. I mean, Darius Slay's going to be shadowing Allen Robinson, so uh, yeah. yeah. Um, I like Green Bay this week against uh, against Kyle Allen. They've been struggling. Their pass rush hasn't been there um, as of late. Like they started out the year really strong and it's really subsided and they haven't really been. It's almost like they can't figure out their identity because they, they were allowing so much against the run. And then it's like, well, now our pass defense is going to suffer and we're going to try and stop the run. And I, th- I think they're stuck in this limbo right now where that's mm-hmm. actually a game that I think could net a lot of points. Um, I'm not shy about attacking that game in DFS this week. All right. Tag. Speaking we'll of DFS, Bobby, did you want to mention our, our contest? Um, I no, no. I think we're gonna save it and uh, and share it on our DFS show. Uh, well, just so you guys know, we are actually doing a contest this week. It's going to be uh, FanDuel.com forward slash Tags and Bobby. We're going to give you guys the restrictions that we're going to have on our lineups tomorrow's show. It's going to be a lot of fun. And uh, Tags, I have a feeling since I beat you so many times that they're going to make it really hard for me. I mean, I kind of need it right now. I'm not, gonna, I'm, not, I'm not even gonna lie. I've been getting spanked in that DFS contest, but uh, uh, hopefully you haven't been. Dude. You've been losing by less than a point every single time. I know, but I'm losing. That's the point. I need to win. I need. I need. To, I need something to boost my self esteem. I saw somebody last week, and they were like, "Dude, are you guys like setting it up so that Tags loses every time? Like, is this like a bit?" And no, it's it's not. I've just been getting really lucky, and uh. it's funny. Yeah, well, hopefully I can get it this week, and uh, yeah. again, we'll share those details on tomorrow's show. Tags, you ready to talk kicker rankings? No. No, me either. Okay, let's do our bold prediction of the week. What are you going with? <laughs> oh, that Ted Ginn goes for 80 yards and a touchdown and finishes as a top 24 wide receiver. All right, dude, here's mine. You ready for this? Ready. Patrick Mahomes plays and still loses in Tennessee. That's bold, my friend. That's bold. Mahomes is going to go against te- uh, Tennessee defense. That's without Malcolm Butler, uh, one of their starting cornerbacks. And, uh, yeah, if Darrell Casey's out, that's uh, that's a bold one. All right, dude. Let's see what happens. I think it would be bold uh, if we had for today's wait, show. Can I change? This was a lot of fun, buddy. Can I change mine? Can I say that uh, my bold prediction would be that the Seahawks beat the 49ers? <laughs> because, I mean, it's considered <laughs> bold. I mean, if they're six-and-a-half-point underdogs. That's not bold, man. That's not. That's not bold. I'll give anyone. Uh, I don't know. I'll, I, I would. I would put the line closer to like plus two and a half. I mean, you get three points for being at home, so it makes sense. And I, I, I think it's fair to say that San Francisco would be the favorite, considering Seattle's defense. I would say that a fair line in that game would be San Francisco by four, four and a half. Okay, man. Yeah, I'm definitely pounding that one. Really excited about it. Okay, guys, that's all for today's show. From Mike Teglier, I'm Bobby Sylvester. Thanks for listening and enjoy your football. Thanks for tuning into the Fantasy Pros YouTube channel. Make sure to check out our featured videos as well. Also, make sure to click that red subscribe button to get notified when we post videos in the future.